Sue McMahon and I'm cook editor of Women's Weekly magazine and I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate ruffle cake. So to start with, I'm going to sift into a bowl 175 grams of self-raising flour and 100 grams of cocoa, a pinch of bicarbonate of soda and a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to stir into this 350 grams of caster sugar. So that's the dry ingredients mixed together. So for the liquid ingredients, I've got three large eggs and 175 millilitres of oil. You can either use corn oil or sunflower oil and 175 millilitres of milk and then I'm going to whisk those together just until it's all combined and then I'm going to tip that into the dry ingredients now this needs to be mixed together so it forms quite a liquid batter and then once it's mixed it gets poured into a cake tin and this is a 20 centimetre round cake tin that I've lined with baking parchment. So I'm going to pour this mixture into the tin, scraping out as much as I can from the bowl. Now this goes into the oven and I've set the oven to 180 centigrade, which is gas four and it will take between one and a quarter and one and a half hours to cook. So for the chocolate ganache, I've broken 300 grams of chocolate into pieces, that's dark chocolate, and I've put it into a bowl. And in the saucepan, I've got 450 millilitres of whipping cream, and I'm going to bring that to the boil. So once this comes to the boil, I'm going to pour it over the chocolate. And then I'm going to add a few drops of vanilla extract. And then I need to stir it until the chocolate melts. All the large bits of chocolate have now melted. So I'll put the stick blender in. And I normally put it in the fridge and I leave the spatula in it because it's good to stir it occasionally as it's cooling so that it cools evenly. And it probably takes about an hour depending on how cold your fridge is until it is on the point of setting. So with this cake recipe, when the cake is cooking, sometimes it domes slightly in the middle. So when I take it out of the oven, I invert it onto a cooling rack and leave it to cool upside down and that tends to flatten the top of it. So I can then take away the baking parchment. And then the cake needs to be cut into three layers. So I'm using a knife with a serrated long blade and I'm going to cut it about a third of the way up. And then I'm going to cut it about two thirds of the way up. Mm -hmm. 
So that's cut the cake now into the three layers. So the ganache has been chilled in the fridge, so it's now much thicker. But I'm going to whisk it to thicken it even more. So the ganache is ready when it's gone slightly lighter in colour and it will hold its shape when it's stirred around. So now to fill the cake with the ganache, I'm going to take off the top two layers and you can see the lovely dense thick texture of the cake now. So I'm going to put some of the ganache into the middle and spread it out to the edge. Then I'll put two layers back on and take off the top and then the top layer goes on place. And now I'm going to use most of the rest of the ganache for covering the top and the sides of the cake. So I've put some onto the top and then I'm spreading it down over the sides. So now the sides are done. I'm going to put a little bit more on the top and spread this out. So to coat the sides of the cake in the vermicelli, I've turned the vermicelli out onto a sheet of baking parchment and then I'm going to scoop it up in my hand and press it against the sides. So I do this all the way around the cake. So to make the ruffles for the top of the cake, I've got a bowl of chocolate which I've tempered and I'm going to pour some of it onto the granite worktop. If you don't have a granite worktop, you can use a granite or a marble pastry board and that will work just as well. And I'm going to spread the chocolate out so it's quite thin. It's setting because it's beginning to turn slightly matte in colour rather than shiny. So as it's setting, I'm going to neaten the edges and I'm using the paint scraper for this. Then when I can see it's almost set, I'm going to put the spatula about five centimetres in from the end and I'm going to put my finger on the chocolate and then move it away from me so the chocolate ruffles up. And I'm leaving them now to set completely before I handle them again. And repeat this process with some more chocolate. So now to assemble the cake, I need to stick the ruffle pieces onto it. And I'm wearing disposable gloves, so I try not to get any fingerprints on the chocolate. You can either use latex or vinyl gloves, or white cotton gloves. So I'm going to pick up the chocolate pieces and only hold them very briefly just to make sure the heat from your hands doesn't make them melt. Any bigger pieces you can break into smaller sections and I do the outside layer first. just putting them on randomly so that they fit. Then once you've gone and done the outside layer, you can then build up around the middle. So that's my finished chocolate ruffle cake. <laughs>